Hello Cheapskaters, I'm Kath Armstrong from the Cheapskates Club. I'm the creator of the Cheapskates Club and our goal is to live life debt free, cashed up and laughing. Today is Tuesday the 20th of April 2021. Folks, I'm here to tell you tonight that I am a fully certified nitwit and proud of it. And I'm especially proud of the money, time and energy that has saved my family over the last 32 years. <sighs> you may remember a sewing sensation in the 1980s. And it was called Knitwit. Uh, by the way, the company is still around and they actually have a physical shop in Perth. And there's also a great online store with some absolutely gorgeous knit fabrics. <laughs> Beautiful. And I think they have free postage on orders over $100. Anyhow, way back in the early 1980s, a family friend talked to my mother who was an incredible seamstress and had absolutely no need of any lessons into going to a knitwit course with her. Mum went on condition I went too. Now, I think she was hoping I'd finally get interested in sewing especially if it was easy and quick instead of asking her to make me a new dress or coat or a pair of shorts or a nighty or whatever it was that I wanted at the time. I'm not sure if I've mentioned this before in past broadcasts, but until my 11th birthday, the only bought thing item of clothing I had that I wore was my socks. Mum sewed. She knitted or she crocheted everything, and I mean everything, my brother and I wore except for our socks. And my socks were always embellished with lace or beads or grub roses, little crocheted edges, whatever, to make them different. So for my 11th birthday, I asked for a bought dress. Just, I really wanted a bought dress. And I was given two. I was so excited. One was a beautiful pink and white sleeveless dress with a full skirt, had a gorgeous white petticoat underneath it and a big white satin ribbon around the waist. The other one was a baby blue short sleeve dress, had an inverted pleat in the front and um, buttons and then a white lace collar. Let's see, all these years later, I remember them in great detail. I love those dresses first port dresses I'd ever had. Anyway, it was mum and Jenny forcing me to go to the knitwit classes that actually spiked my interest in sewing. And I ended up doing all the knitwit, all the knitwit courses I could. And I learned to sew stretch fabrics. Now, if you sew stretch fabrics, you know they're very forgiving. Perfect for a beginner like me. That moved me on to being more adventurous and trying regular dress patterns and woven fabrics. Now, over the years, I've made my own clothes. I've made some of Wayne's clothes. I've made clothes for our children, clothes for nieces and nephews. I've made our curtains and drapes in our homes. I've done chair covers, cushions, bags, pot holders, dolls, doll clothes. I've done tablecloths and serviettes. I've even made Christmas stockings. And, of course, last year I made dozens and dozens and dozens of face masks. Now, I'm not telling you this to boast, but rather to point out that if I can sew these things, anyone can, if you want to. And you don't need a whole lot of fancy, expensive equipment to do it either. Now, of course, there are some basics that you will need. A sewing machine, a pair of good dressmaker's scissors or shears and if you're going to sew regularly you know investing in the good scissors is well worthwhile. Now a good pair of fabric scissors hmm, cost you about $60 maybe on sale but they should last you a lifetime. Now they're only used for fabric now, I know that, you know, $60 could well be a week's worth of groceries, but honestly, having good scissors to cut your fabric, 
just makes cutting out the pattern so much easier and if they are used solely to cut fabric they will last you for years and years and years like I said a lifetime you can get them sharpened if you need to the other thing you'll need is sewing notions now I just love sewing notions the threads the pins set of sewing needles a tape measure um, a chalk pencil or tailor's chalk is really handy for marking but it's not strictly necessary it's just a nice little thing to have sewing notions are relatively cheap they're available at supermarkets and Kmart and Big W and fabric stores like Lincraft or Spotlight and independent fabric shops, of course. But even $2 shops have sewing notions. And some $2 shops have a great range of sewing notions. So that means there's a wide range of prices. Wide, folks, very wide. Now, if you're just starting out, I suggest you stick to the cheaper basics until you decide that you love sewing, it's your new grand passion and investing in more quality brand named notions is worth it. Look, often you'll find complete sewing kits at op shops and these, oh, these can be such a treasure trove if for nothing else but their historical value. They could be filled with vintage threads and, and gorgeous handmade needle cases, um, little tiny thimbles, silver or steel or even leather, antique laces and ribbons and bindings. You might even um, luck out and find some sewing threads on wooden, wooden reels like they used to come in. And often the container they're in is beautiful too. Now I have this one. This little one, it's so cute. Look, it's got a little handle on it. Now, this was given to me by the lovely Maureen, and it is full of this little container, has cottons, and here you go. Whoop, look at that. Some on a little spool. That's a beautiful Semco thread on a wooden spool. Thread is fine to use. Here's um, some cotton tape. There's all sorts of little things in here. But look at this one. Oh, upside down, hooks and eyes. I don't know if we even use hooks and eyes on clothes anymore, but they were great at the top of zippers and dresses and things to keep the neck closed. Wonderful little things. Tiny little press studs. Aren't they gorgeous? Um, what else is in here? There's a whole, oh, there's, this, this was a bounty for me. More press studs. And down the bottom, I'm sure there's needles somewhere I saw. Just beautiful. Look. Little snap fasteners, press studs, beautiful little things. Now, this is given to me, but I've picked up similar in um, op shops. I picked up a beautiful um, uh, wicker cane sewing basket. And it was just $3. It was round, it was oh, probably the size of a dinner plate, round and about maybe 20 centimetres high with the lid flopped open. Absolutely beautiful. Now, I use that for my crochet cottons when I'm working on things. So sewing notions don't have to cost a lot. The other thing will be your sewing machine. Sewing machines have come down in price, folks. They are so inexpensive now. Where once it was a a major purchase and it still can be if you let it be look you can get sewing machines for hmm, sixty dollars you know on sale i know aldi sometimes have them lincraft spotlight you'll find them you know and that's ideal for a beginner sewer or someone who just needs a machine to mend seams and whip up anything with a straight seam you don't need anything fancy now these basic machines usually have a few different stitches and have a straight stitch, a couple of widths of zigzag, maybe a buttonhole and, you know, perhaps a couple of embroidery type stitches. They're pretty basic, but they do the job. Now, again, look at op shops, um, especially around Mother's Day after Christmas for unwanted presents or Marketplace. They're great to pick up a gently used model that, 
you know, it might even have more features than your basic one. It really depends on how often you'll use the sewing machine and whether or not you'll really use all the extra features as to whether or not it's going to be a good investment. The two other things you need to sew can cost big bucks. The first is patterns. Oh, my giddy aunt. Dress patterns have always been expensive. You know, they, they just have always been expensive. But when a simple, just a simple pattern can cost between $17 and $35 for a paper pattern, you really need to stop and think if making your own clothes is worth it. Now, what I've realised over the last 30 plus years of sewing is that while the pictures on the packets, on the envelopes, are updated, the basics are pretty much the same. I'll show you. Look, let me see. Now, I'm using some of Mum's patterns from the 1950s to make dresses for me. Just simple. Um, Mum used to call them shifts, so they're just round neck, pretty much A-line, couple of darts, sleeveless or with short sleeves, easy. Um, she got them from the English Women's Weekly as freebies. They were free patterns. But here, I've dragged out. I went to my cupboard and I've dragged out. Look at this for something fancy. Now, is that not adorable? That's genuine knitwit from the 1980s. So, yeah, maybe the fabric well, might be coming back in vogue. The style might be a bit, well, you might think maybe, maybe not. Don't discount these fab. Don't not use them. Learn to adapt them. It's pretty simple. Here's another one. Baby um, jumpsuits. Perfect. These do not change in style. Change in fabrics, the patterns, the prints, whatever. But they don't change the style. They're really easy. So don't... Um, don't look at a pattern and think it's old or vintage and just collect it and not use it because they are able, still able to be used. Look, even patterns, mum's patterns from the 1950s and the 1960s and the 1970s, you know, all I have to do with them is adjust the length of the skirt or the width of the neck or shoulder or perhaps the width of the trouser leg to suit the fashions of 2021. Now, if you're a beginner sewer, that might be a bit beyond you at the moment, but you will learn. It's pretty simple. The basics are the same. And this applies to men's clothes, women's clothes, babies' clothes, children's. The patterns, the basics are the same. The patterns I used to make the boys' clothes when they were little and Hannah's clothes are the same patterns mum used to sew clothes for my brother and I. That's bad grammar, isn't it? My brother and me. I just changed the trim on them and the fabrics to make them more fashionable for when the kids were little. Now, it certainly helped having boys because, really, little boys wear shirts or T-shirts, they wear trousers, they wear shorts, PJs and trackies. And... Pretty much the same basic styles for the last 50 years. But you know what? Same for little girls. You just adjust the length, use a modern fabric, add a bit of a different trim, and those vintage patterns are still, absolutely still in fashion. Men's clothes are the same, pretty much the same. A few simple tweaks on patterns can change the finished garment so that it looks completely different. It just, you know, use your imagination. Now, if you don't have a source of patterns, if your mum or your grandma or a friend, check out op shops. Bearing in mind it's the design you're interested in, not the bright colours like we had here or, you know, the weird illustrations on the packet. It's the actual basics, the design, the style that you're interested in. There's a big market in vintage um, patterns. And if you look online to buy them, they can be really expensive too. 
but most op shops still have plenty of them at reasonable price, maybe a dollar, two dollars each. And compared to $35 for a new one, that's a big saving. Now, one, one tip, just be sure all the pattern pieces are there. There's no point in buying a pattern only to find one or more pieces are missing. So, you know, in each packet, in each envelope for the pattern, there should be a sheet listing the pattern pieces and the numbers. So just slip the sheet out, slip out the pattern pieces and compare them before you buy it because even a dollar pattern is a waste if you can't use it. You know, there's no point in buying it if you can't use it. Now, another thing I do often, and it came from my knitwit experience, is when I find a pattern I absolutely love and I know I'm going to use it over and over and over, I transfer it to good old interfacing. Thin violin. Here's one here. Look. See? So what I do is I spread the pattern out on the violin and trace around it with a biro and then cut it out. And that's my permanent pattern piece there because the tissue in the pattern packets is very thin. It's quite fragile and especially if you are using older patterns, vintage patterns, very fragile. So you don't want to destroy it. Copy them onto interfacing and you can get interfacing all over the place. And, you know, I buy it by the roll from Spotlight and copy the patterns onto it. Just the cheapest, thinnest you can get will be fine. You don't need to um, spend a small fortune. I think the last time I bought it was about 45 cents a metre. So it was a while ago. And I actually bought the whole roll. You know, now I've still got some stashed away in my wardrobe because it's cheaper um, to use that to transfer it than it is to use paper. And it's easier because it's bigger, of course. And when I'm doing embroidery, it's a good backing for the embroidery too. Now, interfacing violin is often on sale and I'm pretty sure you can get pre pre-measured packs of five metres or ten metres. But you may need to ask in store about those. I know at our spotlight they're usually under the counter and you have to ask for them. They're not on a shelf. We can just pick them up. Look, I'm not sure about Lingcraft and how they deal with it and independent fabric stores well, you know. Get to know the people in the store. Talk to them. Chat to them. Find out what they have because they all deal with these things in their own way. Um, ooh, ooh, ooh. If you have a great fabric shop that you just love, please put it in the comments below and um, they'll be there for anyone. You know, the name of the shop and the address would be great because good fabric shops are so hard to find. They're almost as scarce as hen's teeth. So if you've got a good one, let us know. We all like good fabric shops. Now, back to patterns. When you're transferring it, just be sure to copy the marks, the pattern number and the piece number so you know what they are after you've done the transfer. Now, I do this with all my patterns, like I said, especially on the older patterns because the tissue is so fragile, so, so very fragile. And it tears if you, even putting the pins through to hold it, it will tear. So if you pay good dollars for a pattern, you want it to last. You want to be able to use it. So taking that few extra minutes to transfer them to interfacing is really good. Now, the next big expense when it comes to sewing is fabric. Now, it is true. I will say this. It is true. Often, you know, home dressmaking costs more than buying ready-made, especially if you can go to Kmart or Big W and, you know, you can get $4 T-shirts. The difference is when you make a garment yourself, you've made a garment that's unique. The fabric you choose is unique to that garment. You can fit it properly so it's more tailor-made than ready-made. And you can make it properly. You can match the checks or the stripes. You can reinforce the seams. You can take a decent hem on it so that it hangs properly. And, you know, you stitch it properly and neatly finish the seams off. It's well worth it. 
um, but I'm off on another tangent and that's not it. Back to fabric. You can buy it on sale and you know, I often wait until a fabric I especially like is on sale or until Spotlight or Lingcraft have a 40% off store wide and I will buy it and I'm happy with that. And a stop at Spotlight, I was always on our Boxing Day shopping trip because you know, the fabrics are so expensive normally. They reduce them heavily, up to 80% off on some of them. That puts them within my you know, sewing budget. Other times I'll look online and often they're on um, sales for fabrics and the fabrics can be lovely. Just read the fine print and make sure you find out exactly what each um, fabric is made from whether it's cotton or linen it's polyester or it's a blend of something before you buy it just to make sure it's suitable for what you want another source of fabric and I was just talking to a friend about this recently is old clothes huh. who'd have thought old clothes could be remade now, depending on what you want to make, if you carefully unpick um, old clothes, it might be a, a shirt or a blouse or a dress or a pair of shorts or whatever, and, and unpick them and then iron them out so they're nice and flat, you can use the pieces to create a new garment for virtually nothing. Now, this works especially well with things like overcoats and suits um, more formal heavy fabrics like the heavy satins or gabardines, denim, so on, they, you know, can be remade really, really easily so they look great. Now, op shops and garage sales are good sources of fabric at rock bottom prices. When you're in the op shop, don't just look for lengths of fabric, but look at the sheets, look at the tablecloths. Look at the curtains. I know it sounds a bit like the sound of music, doesn't it? But look at those fabrics. Look at the doona covers and see, look at the fabric. Don't look at the actual item. Don't think, oh, it's a tablecloth. But look at the fabric and think how it can be used. Now, it might just be remade into placemats and a table runner or it could be, um, you know, a shirt and for a baby or a cot blanket or it could go into a quilt. But look at it, but don't look at it as whatever it is. Look at it as you want it, what you want to turn it into and use your imagination. Oh, and this is something I do often. If you have a favourite shirt or dress or nighty or whatever that's worn out, use it as a pattern to make a new one same deal i've done this with a couple of my absolute favorite dresses and it's you know really quite simple just very very carefully unpick all the seams and if you're a beginner or not very experienced sewer jot down how it comes apart because you'll stitch the new garment in the reverse order so to speak. It's not that difficult, people. You, you don't need to be particularly talented to be able to do that. There are a few other tools that are useful to have if you want to sew. If you decide you like this sewing thing, it might be worth thinking about getting them. Now, apart from my sewing machine, and my sewing machine is a Janome that Wayne bought me as a wedding present when we were married. So it's um, 32, 32 and a half years old. I also have a four thread overlocker. Now, I had to wait a lot of years to get my overlocker because they were very expensive and we didn't have the money. You know our story. We did not have the money to spend on an overlocker. Then along came Aldi. And they had them as a special buy for $249, which was very cheap back then. So I dipped into our savings and I bought one. That has been invaluable, absolutely invaluable. I use it all the time. And last year when I was whipping up all those face masks, it never missed a beat. 
Look, you know, I think they're probably around the same price these days, they've come, which means they've come down in price really. So still around the $250, maybe $300, depending on the brand. But if you, you know, figure in inflation, it's, it's a pretty good deal. And it's good to know you don't necessarily need an overlocker, but it's nice to have. Now, the other machine I have that, again, I had to wait a long, long time for is my embroidery machine. Now, it's a brother, and it has been... Oh, almost work to death. I use it to do toppers for hand towels, to monogram towel sets. I used it to um, monogram Hannah's towels when she was an apprentice. I, so nobody would mix them up with theirs and take hers by mistake because she was always particular about her towels and kept them nice. It's prettied up baby clothes and bunny rugs and bibs. Um, it's embellished pillow slips and sheets it's turned ordinary fabric you know ordinary fabric bags into something really pretty it has been well worth the investment and it was over six hundred dollars it but it's paid for itself many many times now if you were to look for an extra tool for your sewing i'd look at an overlocker first it's the more practical, it comes my practical streak, folks. It's the more practical tool to use. It will help to give whatever you make a really professional finish, but it isn't absolutely necessary. It's more a want, not a need. Now, trust me, if you think you need it to finish seams, you don't. You can zigzag raw wrenches. You can do French seams. If you don't know how, Look it up on YouTube. You can do flat seams, same thing. If you don't know how, look them up. You can bind seams. Yes, I've bound seams on clothes. I've made many times and I've usually made the binding too, um, particularly on woolen garments. That, now, they'll all give a good finish to whatever you're making. They'll finish the seams off, stop the fraying and so on. But an overlocker does make that job easier. Now, just before I go, you might not be able to do a knitwit course anymore, but you can do Learn to Sew courses. I know Spotlight run them, but so do many neighbourhood houses and um, community groups. And, of course, you can always check out YouTube because there are hundreds of thousands of choices and watch a few videos. I'd suggest starting with YouTube especially if you're not sure sewing anything, let alone clothes, is going to be something that you'll do more than once or that it probably won't interest you, start small. Remember, sewing, it's like anything. You need to crawl before you walk and walk before you run. Learn the baby steps and they'll stand you in good stead. You'll have the basics and you'll be able to move on from there. Now, this show was inspired by a question from Jill asking if I'd do a show about sewing and patterns. So here it is. I hope it's been helpful to someone, if not Jill, someone else. Now, if there are any questions, pop them below in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them as quickly as I can. Now, um, just give me some time because, you know, I'm... I'm good, but I'm not that good. I'll, but I will, I will do my best to answer them. And seriously, folks, if I can sew, if I can make things that look decent, anyone can. So don't be afraid to try it. All righty. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you like the show, please give us a thumbs up. It helps out with um, our YouTube rankings. And if you know someone who might like this show or who might benefit from knowing about basic sewing and how to get started or knowing about the Cheapskates Club, please use the share button to send them the link. And lastly, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. You know, it's as simple as hitting that subscribe button and then hit the bell and then you're notified every time we do a video or a live show so that you don't miss out. 
I'll be back next Tuesday, folks, same time with another show. I hope you can join us again. And I hope you enjoy sewing. Give it a try. Have a great week, everyone, and good night.